Well, for this week's show, we're actually out in the backyard looking at this old water pump. That is so cool. It's been standing there for over 50 years. Oh my, I know it was standing there when I moved here. Yeah, David stuck that in the ground some, like I say, about 55 years ago. And there's quite a bit of backstory. This is, uh, has a lot of sentimental value to me, this old water pump. It was made somewhere around 1911 and it's not in the best of shape. I, I started repainting it a couple of months ago and I, I need to get back on that before the snow falls and finish it. But you can see a lot of the castings here are broken. The whole handle is broken off here, which is part of the story of how this thing came here. The story starts here at Bear Lake. Oh been to my, Bear Lake? no, I haven't. We used to go to Bear Lake when we were kids all the time. After my father passed away, my mother's brother, we called him Unc for the obvious reasons, uh, he and his World War II buddies loved to come up to Bear Lake and hang out, and they'd bring David and I along because we enjoyed coming here too. With our father gone, uh, Unc sort of took over the role of dad for the two of us. He and his buddies decided to build a motel and a marina right here at this location so they could get in some maximum screwing around. Now, a few years before David passed away, he just suddenly said, let's go up there and see what's left. It was a Sunday afternoon and we just climbed in the car and just spontaneously left like we were being drawn to the place or something. And this is what we found. Here's the old motel. Cabins are all gone. The sidewalks that went to the cabins are still there and the trees that the guys planted are still there. They would bought some cabins from a place called Motel Utah. Oh, Motel. <laughs> Motel Utah and they moved them up here. And right here, they were going to build private cabins for themselves. That one with the blue roof is where Unc was going to build his cabin. He never actually had a chance to do that, but someone built a cabin there. This was the marina. This is the harbor. It's a little dry right now because the lake is particularly low. It was very, very early in the spring that we came up here. Normally, of course, the lake is much higher. Now, right here, there was a funny old building, and the guys built this. It's, it's been remodeled a couple of times. It didn't look like this when they built it. But this was the office for the motel and the boat shop and a little restaurant. And right here was that pump. It was the water supply for the building. And so they just unhooked it and threw it on the trash heap. And when David saw that, he freaked out and said, I want that and it had gotten kind of broken being thrown on the trash heap, but he grabbed it and brought it home and stuck it right there. And it's been there ever since. Well, that's really cool. I love it sitting out there. It's beautiful, and, and it means a lot to me. Now, about a mile up the beach from the motel that the guys were building was this place. This is Ideal Beach, and they had rock and roll on their jukebox. Wow. So we enjoyed that, and they also had this. This was, oddly enough, a roller skating rink. I remember it being really huge, and it's not huge. It's barely as acceptable as a roller skating rink, but there it is. Now, our immediate neighbor at the motel was Gus Rich, and he lived in a house he'd built out on the end of this point. These days, that's affectionately known as Gus Rich Point. But he owned all this land up here, and he had sold this big chunk of land to the guys to build their motel and marina on. Now, Gus had been living here for a long time, running this place. This was Gus Rich's Lakeshore Lodge right down on the beach. And uh, while the motel was under construction for several years, <laughs> this is where we would hang out, was over at Gus Rich's place. And when David and I went up there to see if there was anything left, we just waltzed in here like we owned the place, right past a bunch of no trespassing signs. And well, there it was, we were just shocked, but the building's still standing, not in very good repair, but it was still there. We had sort of assumed it would have been long gone. So while we were wandering around, we were approached by a guy, uh, the security guard, and he oh. was a little, 
a little bit offended by the oh. fact that we just wandered in there because he'd left the gate open. And he informed us that this had been bought by a local Salt Lake family and they were building their dream vacation site here. A very, very prominent Utah family. And he said, don't mention the name or I'll kill you. So we're uh. not going to mention the name. Uh. So they had purchased this place just with the idea of tearing the lodge building down. Actually, nature had been trying to tear the lodge building down forever. This happened when we were just kids. A huge ice flow came in off the lake and just devastated the place. Gus had it all fixed up really nice and it, it just ripped the back wall off the building and did an enormous amount of damage. And, Gus put it back together, but it, it really, really brought him down. It, it just really made a mess of everything, and it was never quite the same after that. Anyway, the security guard let us just kind of wander around here and take a look at things. After we explained our story to him, he showed a certain amount of sympathy and said, go ahead and take a little bit of time and walk around. Just." Uh, don't mess with anything. So we just kind of scoped the whole place out. It was just stunning how much the place really hadn't changed. I mean, it's more dilapidated than it was, but it's just exactly the way we remembered it some 60 years earlier. Gus had always had all these little outbuildings, these little cabins that he would rent to people. and. That's where we would stay when, when we were up here, as we'd rent one of his little cabins, since our motel was yet to be built. Well, and after a little while, the guard said, well, let's go inside and take a look around. So he opened the door. And holy cow, this was just exactly the way we remembered it. Smaller, you know, as a kid, you remember everything being bigger. Except Gus had this place all fixed up with railroad memorabilia. He's been friends with the, the Bamberger family, and he'd picked up all these souvenirs from the Bamberger Railroad, and everywhere in here was all full of switch lanterns and marker lanterns and just all kinds of Bamberger memorabilia and some other fun memorabilia that he'd put in here hung up on the walls. Gus had a few coin-operated games, pinball games and that sort of thing. And right over here was one of those old Coke machines, the ones that only give Coca-Cola for a nickel. And uh, so I learned how to enjoy Coca-Cola. I was more of an Orange Crush guy, but I figured out Coca-Cola. And this was amazing. This marlin and these fishnets were something that Gus had hung up. And after all these years, there they were. That light bulb hanging precariously was a Bamberger switch lantern back in the day. Now it's just a light bulb. And the speaker's still there from the jukebox. No rock and roll over here, just good old country western. But... And this wall in the dining room was just covered with Bamberger stuff. There was uh, two locomotive bells and a pile headlight and builder's plates and switch lanterns this was a great wall back then well maybe that's where you got your love for switch lanterns and items like that you know i'm pretty sure it is i just love this place so much now this spot right here is really burned into my memory uh, when i was about 10 years old the phone rang in the middle of the night and mom picked it up and someone on the other end said that there had been an accident up at the lake and that Unc was somewhere out on the lake and no one knew where. He was knocked out of the boat and uh, was lost. And we drove through the night and got up there and just as we got there we saw them pulling him out of the lake onto a boat and we chased the boat over here to Gus Riches and they brought his body out through this door and loaded it onto a waiting ambulance. Well, while we were there, they bulldozed this cabin right in front of us and it was gone forever. And they were about to proceed with some of the other cabins. 
They said that the main lodge was going to be torn down in the next couple of weeks. They just needed to move all the belongings out of there. And then they were going to start on the new house. That's actually why the gate had been left open, was to let the demolition crews in here. They had already built this. This is their fancy marina. It's hard to believe that one family needs a, a marina just for their own personal use. But this is what they had been working on. We drove up to where Gus's house had been, up on Gus Rich Point. House was long gone. Few buildings up here, more modern buildings, but all that was left of Gus Rich's house is this little sidewalk that he'd put in many, many years ago. It's pretty easy to see why Gus built his house up here instead of down by the lodge. Look at that view. It's wonderful. Just absolutely beautiful. What a spectacular lake. It's really easy to see why Unc fell in love with this place. And uh, Gus would have a magnificent view of the new harbor that the family has put in as well. I'm not so sure Gus would approve of the harbor, but uh, at any rate, he also had a beautiful view of his own property down there. I'm sure he looked down uh, with great pride on what he had created. And yet today, I assume that all of this is gone, has been replaced by a great big fancy new house to go along with the great big fancy marina. So all that's really left is one rattly little half broken pump out in our backyard. Everything else from this era is now long gone. <laughs>